Well, good evening, folks, and welcome once again, and happy Sabbath. Let's bow our heads before we get into our topic for the evening. Father in heaven, Lord, I ask that you would bless us this evening. I thank you for a Sabbath day's rest, a time when we can come away from the busyness and the cares of this world and spend time in your beautiful presence without any outside interruptions or distractions. Lord, I pray that that will be the case for each one of us as we spend time together this evening and throughout the Sabbath hours. I also pray, Lord, as we see COVID picking up again, that uh, you would keep uh, us safe and our loved ones safe and that... Uh, Lord, as soon as possible, this would go away so we can get back to the business of, of doing evangelism and all of the things and the ministries that you would have us as a church to be doing. Bless us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start by reading a passage of scripture, and it's found in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 25 to 27, verses 25 to 27. Here's what it says that there should be no schism in the body, that, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. I just thought that that's a fitting passage as we're going through all of this COVID business and you see how the slogan everywhere is we're all in this together and some people feel that way and some people don't and some people think there's a virus and others think it's all a hoax and I don't know where we each one stand on this, but certainly as a church and as a church family, I believe that we stand poised in, in times like this. Uh, when we are forced to take a step back from what we normally do, uh, we still have a body of believers, brothers and sisters, who can rejoice together, who can pick each other up when we're down, and who can just continue to be together and work together. No matter what is going on around us, we are the body of Christ, and we can do all things through him who gives us strength. I want to read a little from the Pen of Inspiration. Manuscript 63, Manuscript 63 1898. And here's what it says. In Christ, we are all members of one family. God is our father, and he expects us to take an interest in the members of his household. As branches of the parent vine, we derive nourishment from the same source, and by willing obedience, we become one with Christ. If the member of if one member of Christ's household falls into temptation, the other members are to look after him with kindly interest, seeking to arrest the feet that are straying into false paths and win him to a pure, holy life. This service requires from every member, is required from every member of his church. Notice it said to look after him with kindly interest. So we don't go there and say, how could you do this? And how could you go so wrong? And, and I can't believe you fell or anything. We go there and we try to love this individual. We try to work with them. I know as elders, and we're dealing with an issue, uh, we always ask the question, how can we deal with this discipline or this issue in the church in a way that will glorify God and work for the salvation of the person involved. And that should not just be an elder or a church issue. That should be for each of us on an individual level. If you know of somebody that's struggling or hurting, uh, or maybe you are and people have come to you, I pray that when that happens, we treat others as we would want to be treated. If a brother or sister has stumbled and fallen and they're in the ditch, we need to go to them with love and care and nurturing and remember that they are a wounded soul in need of our help, uh, not in need of rebuke and scathing uh, comments and, and all kinds of things like that. Some, because they do not receive and impart light, have no genuine spiritual experience. They are often surprised by temptations that come in such fascinating forms that they do not recognize them as deceptions of the wily foe. How important that they obtain the experience necessary for them to have. The members of the Lord's family are to be wise and watchful, doing all in their power to save their weaker brethren from Satan's concealed nets. So we need to be watchful and vigilant, but we need to be careful and loving and benevolent in our handling of issues. This is 
home missionary work, and it is helpful to those who do it. It is as helpful to those who do it for the one to, uh, as it is to the one for whom it is, it is done. The kindly interest we manif manifest in the home circle, the words of sympathy we speak to our brothers and sisters, fit us to work for the members of the Lord's house with whom we, re uh, with whom, if we remain loyal to Christ, we shall live with through the eternal ages. So just think about that. When we are trying to correct or help an erring brother or sister, or if one is coming to help us, these are people we can spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with. Won't it be wonderful to know that, hey, somebody came and picked me up when I was stumbling and that's why I'm here. Uh, or, or maybe somebody will come to you or I and say, thank you. When I was stumbling, you picked me up and you'll have all eternity to spend with these individuals. So let's be very careful because the same goes if you handle something the wrong way. You will miss that person for all of eternity because of what you didn't do or the wrong way you did do something. Be thou faithful unto death, Christ says, and I will give you a crown of life. At Revelation 2.10. Then how carefully should the members of the Lord's family guard their brethren and sisters. Make yourself their friend. If they are poor and in need of food and clothing, minister to their temporal as well as their spiritual wants. Thus you will be a double blessing to them. How tender we should be in our dealings with those who are striving for the crown of life. He who in love and tenderness has helped a soul in need may at another time himself be in need of compassion, the compassionate words of hope and encouragement. And that takes us back to the comment I want to leave us with. Treat others how you want to be treated. Reprimand others how you want to be reprimanded if you were doing something wrong. Uh, congratulate others the same way you'd want to be congratulated if you're doing something wonderful. You get, you get my drift. We need to be treating others as better than ourselves, treating others the way we want to be treated, and understanding that every one of these interactions has eternal consequences. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, this evening, as we've talked a little bit about loving those within our church family and helping those in their time of need or being helped ourselves in our time of need. Lord, I pray that if maybe we've messed this up in the past, you would reveal that to us and show us how to do it the right way in the future. May we always act and react out of a love for the lost and a love for the saved in your church, even if they don't seem to be acting saved at the moment. Uh, may we react in love and kindness and may we win for your kingdom by God's grace, those who are willing to listen. Lord, I ask that you would bless us now in these your Sabbath hours. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Well, folks, blessings. I hope I see you in our uh, prayer meeting in just a few moments. Uh, I'd like to see you join there, but if not, happy Sabbath, and maybe we'll see you at church tomorrow. Blessings and good night.